In this tutorial, I'll show you how I went about creating this texture so I could map it onto this surface like this to get this kind of effect. And if we go look in close to make this work, let's see, you'll notice what it is. Not only is it that gradient texture that I had before, but now I have both a yellow and a orange, light orange ellipse mapped into the scene to kind of give it this pattern. So there's a lot of little subtle colors that go on, but that's really what helps bring the textures to life. All right, so I'll show you my texture design program that I'm using, that I built it with, and maybe you've seen this in some of my other videos. And I don't really have a name for it yet, I'm kind of just playing, but it's very powerful because of the programming language. And what I have in here is, here's the original code that draws the this type of texture here and basically all you really need to know for this program is you need to know how to use Cartesian coordinates and polar coordinates. It's really straightforward. Though I, and the reason I'm doing it all myself right now is because I have a great many other variations that are more mathematical in nature than that built into the programming language. But in this case I use Cartesian coordinates. I set a scale. I set an angle that I can rotate things like these are rotated. Uh, I set a color, here's color zero, or I give it red, green, blue alpha values. And then I do it for color one, so I'm using two colors when I draw. And then I start a location at negative seven, negative seven, and for X and Y. And I give it, uh, in this case, I'm using the rectangle that I'm drawing right now. And I give it a size, and I call method two 225 times. And that's because I'm doing a 15 by 15 grid. So over in method two, I'm using color zero. Notice I'm not setting any colors. I'm just picking the one I want to use. And color zero is this one down here that gets set, that I set. And then I draw a gradient rectangle. And I increment the x-coordinate value by one. This is the, the programming command. That's all that's required. x-coordinate plus and a space and then a double precision floating point number. And then here's my programming conditional checks. This is built-in command. If x-coordinate is greater than 7.0, then do this next command, y coordinate plus 1.0. I'll group these later, but for now you have to do it a line at a time. And then also if x coordinate is greater than 7.0, change the x coordinate back to negative seven. So basically it's going across one line, and when it gets to the end, it comes up and starts again, and that's how I'm drawing all these, this grid overlapped on each other like that. And then the, this portion of the program is entirely separate. I have those over here in these three separate commands like this, these methods. And the value of doing it this way is I can kind of mix and match. Like for instance, I can just come over here and maybe change this to 150 for color one. I'm just gonna run the script. And so it's only gonna run this part portion of the program in it because I'm not ever calling anything but method two from here and method two goes here and it returns back to where it was called from method one. So I go, okay, maybe that I want that as my new background color. And then I can come over here to method four and it's doing its own little thing. And what it's doing is it's calling method five and method six here. Let's see if I see that. Yeah, so basically, and method five does one thing, method five is drawing a filled ellipse with a certain size and using color two. So there's the yellow and it increments the angle by 45 degrees. And then method six does it, but using a smaller ellipse. So I kind of encapsulate things into their own little blocks to keep it simple that I can even save them in their own little blocks and return them how I want. So let's just run method four now from within here. And so there is that pattern that I generated like that on a purple background. So it's super flexible for me, like, oh, maybe this orange, maybe I don't want it centered so much, right? Well, that orange is controlled by this command right here, the radial distance for 3.0. So maybe before I call method six down here, I'll call, I'll change the radial distance and I'll call it maybe 2.5. I don't know where it's gonna put it. I'm just testing, right? I'm gonna run that script again and you can see this time it drew it, but it drew it back here instead at that location. So it gives me a lot of power to adjust things. Then I just save it as a texture, and that's how I was able to bring it into Blender and map it on like that. And of course, this I'm controlling with this scale over here. So maybe I'll change that to eight like that and eight down here. And then I can change the pattern as I like, depending on what I'm trying to map in the scene. All right, well, hope that kind of gives you a pretty good idea because 
you know, hopefully at some point in the future, instead of me just making libraries full of textures, which I like doing, you know, eventually, if there's enough interest, maybe I just turn around and, you know, put this out there, this program out there, and sell copies of this program, and then let uh, all of you as artists and illustrators uh, create your own textures. Then you can create as many as you want. Okay. All right. Well, that's for now, and I'll see you in the next video.